The Bitcoin versus gold debate continues as Natalie Brunel absolutely destroys Peter Schiff on live television. We dive into the scarcity of both assets and look at the ETF launch of gold in 2004 and see how that might compare to Bitcoin's price over the next 10 years. Plus, is it better to trust the laws of physics or try to create your own? Dubai and the crypto bros both learn the hard way. Also, Jerome Powell says that inflation is not under control and banks around the globe continue to censor people's rights to accessing their own money. And TikTok next block. The Bitcoin halving is less than 500 blocks away. Act accordingly. Welcome to the Bitcoin Daily Show. I'm Dante Cook, head of Swan Business. The man of the people, Boban Marjanovic, knew the desires and wishes of all the people in the stadium that he was playing in front of that night and missed his second free throw to give 20,000 people free chicken. Fans are getting excited here. There might potentially be some free chicken on the board if he misses the second free throw. Oh, they're pointing to you. Like, Bobo's playing with the crowd. Say, you want chicken? Here's your job. Oh, he gave him chicken. He's a man of the people. And like Boban, yesterday, Natalie Brunel represented the desires and wishes of everybody in the Bitcoin community, publicly giving a smackdown to Peter Schiff on why Bitcoin is a better asset than gold moving forward. She absolutely dismantles Peter on Charles Payne's show on Fox Business. If Natalie were smart, as soon as this segment is over, she would sell all of her Bitcoin. Because <laughs> if she doesn't sell it now, she's going to sell it later at a much lower all price. Right. Well, them's what we call fighting words. Uh, and I think they're similar drivers <laughs> for both. But let me introduce the two. Uh, Natalie, Natalie, meet Peter. Peter, meet Natalie. All right, Natalie, some choice words for you. What would you tell Peter? Oh, I know, Peter. And you know what? Bitcoiners don't feel the need to constantly <laughs> attack gold because we're not threatened by gold. And the reason that we have this failed fiat experiment that has impoverished our nation is because of the defects of gold. The fact that it's not easily portable. It's not easily verifiable. It doesn't offer instant final global settlement. And so you know what? Centralized authorities hijacked it. They papered over it. And we have a system of leverage and rehypothecation that hurts the working class. Bitcoin is immune to all of that. It is the savings account for billions of people that we really need and, and can most rely on. And it offers that final global global <laughs> settlement that we need. And so gold is the analog version of sound money, but Bitcoin is the digital version, and that's why it's going to be the faster horse yeah. in this race. Bitcoiners are not threatened by gold. Actually, we're just trying to improve on some of the shortcomings of gold. The reason that gold could not be the global reserve asset behind fiat currencies is because of centralization risk, the lack of portability, the lack of verifiability or auditability. All these things that Bitcoin proves on as a digital scarce asset. And with the halving coming up in less than 500 blocks, Bitcoin will be the most scarce monetary asset in the world. We can, however, use gold's past and look at the ETF launch in 2004 to get an idea of what ease and access to this commodity did to its price and what it could do to Bitcoin's price over the coming decade. When gold's ETF launched, its price rose from $400 to $1,600 because it became accessible to the masses, just like these Bitcoin ETFs. Speaking of ETFs, if you look at a chart of the flows from yesterday, you'll see that BlackRock was the only one that had outflows or inflows, as all of them showed $0 or no flows. Why does that happen? Well, ETF expert James Seifert tells us exactly why in this tweet thread here. Out of 3,500 ETFs, 2,903 of them showed zero flows yesterday. And why is that? I'm going to paraphrase what James is saying here. According to James, if there isn't a large mismatch of either more supply or more demand or buyers or sellers, there will not be a creation block that is created, which is typically made up of 5,000 or 50,000 shares of the underlying asset. So when there isn't enough flows to constitute a creation unit, then they don't have to tap the underlying APs or market makers who are actually doing the trading and buying of the Bitcoin for the cash underneath. But BlackRock continuing to be the leader has not had a day where this has happened. Fidelity, it's happened once or twice. In the other ones, it's happened a handful of times. And it's because BlackRock continues to see demand from people like the Group of Brazil, who bought its Bitcoin ETF as part of their holdings. The flows continue to be steady with BlackRock. Speaking of flows, and in a bit of irony, the 
Token 2049 conference or the world premier crypto conference is happening in Dubai on the 18th and 19th, where these crypto bros try to make it rain out of thin air. And Dubai has tried to do the same thing by seeding the clouds in order to produce more rain than what nature would naturally do. And you know what happens when you try to create your own laws of nature and how the world is supposed to work? Well, you get an airport that looks like a river. It turns out it's better to create within the confines of the universe than to try to create your own universe itself. And funny enough, this happened around the crypto conference where proof of stake says that you don't need to abide by the laws of the universe. You can create your own alternative universe. Listen to what Vitalik has to say right here. Proof of work is based on the laws of physics. And so you sort of have to work with the world as it is, right? You have to work with electricity as it is, hardware as it is, what computers are. Whereas because proof of stake is virtualized in this way, it's basically letting us create a simulated universe that has its own laws of physics. And that just gives us as protocol developers a lot more freedom to optimize the system around actually having all of the uh, different uh, security properties that we want. Speaking of seeding the clouds, there is an example floating out there made alert by the Trust Wallet security team on the dark web that there is a potential hack and exploit in the Mac zero day coverage where a hacker could potentially access your private keys through the iMessage. The Trust Wallet team made it very clear that this isn't a Trust Wallet problem. This is a crypto wide problem, but not so fast. One of the things that we like to teach with Bitcoin and why it's called a private key is because you're supposed to keep it private. Do not share your seed phrase with anyone. And as best as you can, write that seed phrase on a piece of paper or a seeded plate, which is metal, and keep it offline. Keep it secure. Keep it safe. Keep it protected. When you do that, you won't be vulnerable to attacks and hacks like these. If you have questions about this, as always, we're here to help at Swan. 83% of all Bitcoin purchased on Swan's platform is withdrawn. And so we're here to be your ally in your journey to self-custody and self-sovereignty. So if you have questions about that, send me an email at daily at swanbitcoin.com and I personally will help you get started on your self-custody journey and learning about which hardware wallet should you get. Should you get one that supports a bunch of crypto tokens and NFTs and ordinals and everything else? Or should you go with a Bitcoin only hardware wallet? Send me an email and I'm happy to give you my thoughts. Sometimes people email in and ask, what gives you confidence to invest in Bitcoin? There's a lot of reasons why I have confidence, but on a day like today, because it is the daily show, I'll give you a few examples from just today. When Jerome Powell comes on a press conference and says that inflation is not yet tamed, and they don't have the confidence enough to cut rates, I take him at his word. And if inflation's high, do you want to hold a scarce asset or do you want to hold dollars? Or when I see a very senior and influential editor like Yuri Berliner get suspended from his job at NPR because he questions the woke agenda and policies of the firm, I say that we probably need more truth in the world. Or when I see people in Canada unable to withdraw $3,000 from their own bank account, their own money, in order to buy a car from their friend, I think Bitcoin has a use case. So I will either give you a bank card, or if you're going to get cash, I will need an invoice for the car purchase. Why? No, I'd like to, t it's for, if the car's payment's for in cash, I, I, can't, I can't use a bank draft. Are you buying from like a private Yeah, it's private. Person? It's literally from my friend. From your friend? Yeah, but he wants it in cash. Can he give you like anything, say, when you're purchasing from him? No, I don't, you don't need that. I, bro, what is it? I'm only asking for three. What, what is this? I, I, it's my money. I'm allowed to withdraw from my own bank account. Yeah, so I can, you said, that what's the maximum limit you can give a withdrawal to a customer? It's $3,000 on the date. You've already mentioned that multiple times. Yeah, not today. Why not today? Today I would need a bank or we're getting the most. But why, you don't, so you need proof of what it is? Why is that? And why is yes. that? Why is that? Why do you need, why do you need me to tell you what it is? Why do you need, what kind of proof is that? I bring in a note? Like, what, how is that, what is that going to change? I don't understand. So that you, you need to give my money. I'm not taking a bank job. I would like cash, please. Yeah, I won't go to the I'm just going to sit here until you give me cash, so I'm not going to leave. Okay, so if you want, you can have a sit there. And then do what? what who am I waiting for? Uh, I can get the manager to talk to you. Well, yeah, get the manager, because yeah. this is un like, it's unbelievable.
Or in another example, when a woman in New Zealand goes to withdraw cash from her bank, they say that they don't actually have cash. And I see a use case for Bitcoin. Well, outrage in Queensland tonight after a local woman rocked up to her bank to withdraw cash, only, be, only to be told they didn't have any. Taryn Compton wanted to grab some notes to pay a tradie, but when she got to the ANZ ATM, she realised she'd forgotten her FPOS card when she asked the teller for the money instead. She was told the bank doesn't carry cash. And Taryn Compton's here to tell us all about her terrible banking experience. Taryn, <laughs> what did you think when you walked into a bank only to be told they don't have cash? <laughs> I thought it was absolutely crazy. I thought she must have misheard what I wanted, if I'm honest. How can you go to a bank and not be able to get your own money out? Taryn, that's what I'm confused about. So what's in the bank if there's no cash? Isn't there a... Like, in the, if you open up the safe, what's in there? What is, how did they explain it to you? They just said, I'm so sorry, we can't help you. There's nothing we can do. We don't have cash here. So did you think maybe that was a temporary situation? That maybe they were going to get some cash tomorrow? <laughs> No, she actually said, we don't carry cash anymore. We can't help you. And like I mentioned earlier, when I see that we're less than 500 blocks away from the Bitcoin halving, I know that Bitcoin is programmed to be more scarce versus less scarce. And so I invest. It's not complicated, but it's also not easy. The simple thing oftentimes is the hard thing to do. It's not complicated, but it takes courage. It takes the ability to block out all the noise and all the incongruent data and information you see out there, like Bitcoin's price dipping to $62,000 today. That's just noise. We're going to invest, we're going to spread the message, and we're going to celebrate. And one of the ways that we're going to celebrate is on Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern or 11 a.m. Pacific, we are going to be doing the Bitcoin Halftime Show. I'm going to be co-hosting the show, and joining me on the show, we're going to have Bitcoin OGs, Max and Stacey Herbert. We're also going to have Swan CEO, Corey Clipson. We're going to have world-renowned macro analyst and economist, Lynn Alden. And we're also going to have Swan co-founder, Brady Swinson. You're not going to want to miss it. And so in order to not miss it, subscribe to the channel. And click the link in the show notes to be notified so that you don't miss the Bitcoin halftime show. We're going to have a lot to talk about. And for me, I'm super excited to host the Best Minds Thinkers and provide that to you here on the Bitcoin Daily Show. So, on Thursday, we won't be having the Bitcoin Daily Show. We will be having the Bitcoin Halftime Show to celebrate the having. And with that, we're signing off for today. This is Dante Cook with swan.com. Happy stacking.